Hello, this is another tutorial I've made for my friend Judy, who'd like to 3D print a roller with raised reverse letters that she can roll them into clay for her ceramics class. And this is what we're going to end up with, something like this. My cylinder is going to be 30 centimeters, um, which is quite large. This is just a demonstration model here. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to do it in a couple of steps. One, we're going to create the cylinder. And two, we're going to create the letters and then bend it around an arc that is the same uh, curve as our cylinder. So we have to be, if you, if you want it done right, you have to be very careful with how that, how that happens. So let me show you how to do this in a couple of steps. Get rid of everything and let's start fresh. So I'm going to make a circle. I want my circle to be 150 millimeters, so I just type in 150. And then, just to be sure that we have a nice smooth circle, type in 100S, which gives me a 100-sided circle. Circles aren't really circles, they're polygons uh, with multiple sides. And if you make it 100 sides, it looks circular. I'm then going to push-pull it some arbitrary amount. And just to verify my dimension here, the diameter is, in fact, 300 millimeters. So I'm going to... Um, make this a solid piece and I'm just going to move this out of the way okay so there's the cylinder and today we're going to use the uh, Chris Fulmer's shape bender you need to download this from the warehouse from the extension warehouse and I have done so and I have it as a plug-in Chris Fulmer shape bender so once you've done that, you'll be able to use this um, a pretty pretty versatile tool. The tool needs needs three things. First of all, it needs an object. For this, we're going to use the 3D letters. And engravers MT may not be the best thing to uh, to throw into clay. Uh, you might want something that's a little bit thicker text. So we'll just do something like this. And I just place it on the deck. Because my cylinder is vertical, I'm going to want to rotate my text. So I'm still in the move. I've still got the move tool up. And so I can then grab one of these red arrows on the side, rotate it, and notice down here in the angle box I've rotated at 90 degrees you could type that in to you could just type in 90 if you wanted to to make that rotate like that okay so one thing that shape bender needs is a straight line along the red axis it doesn't have to be right on the red axis but it, it needs to be parallel to it the length actually does matter and the location does matter and I'll show you that in just a second the next thing we're going to do is place it on some curved surface. So let's make our curved, curved surface somewhere out here. And we can just choose any, any shape that we want. Again, this is arbitrary. What we want is more, is more specific, and so I'm going to show you how to get exactly what you want. The tool needs a line along the red axis, and then it needs some shape into which it, the text can be bent. Unfortunately, the shape, the bended shape, cannot be a complete circle, for example, it has to have two distinct endpoints. So now you, you simply highlight the text you'd like to, or the object you'd like to, to bend, and it has to be an object. It can't be exploded. It has to be one solid object. I'm going to click then the Shape Bender tool. It then tells you, please select a single line on the red axis. So I'm going to click that axis there, and it tells me this is where the text will start and where it will end. And then it asks me to select a curve onto which to bend the shape. And so I do that. It's going to think for a second. And there it is. Notice that there's a lot of space between the text, the fleeting face of the text, and the, and the blue line, or the, the line on the red axis. That space there will give us this space here. Okay. So the location of the text in relation to the line it's really important and down here there are some kind of cryptic messages 
if we press the up arrow uh, on the keyboard, then it either selects the outer uh, surface or the inner surface to to put the uh, to spread the spread the words around. So the up arrow just toggles the curved surface, which one it, we want it to be on. So if this is what you want right there, then you can hit enter. And notice that part of the word here is curved and the other part is straight, kind of tangent at the end. And that's that's because the line that we created was shorter than the text itself, than the text we want to curve. And so the length of the line is important and the placement of the line is important. All right, so I'm going to kill all of this here. One thing I did forget to do is to rotate the text, reverse the text, uh, because we want it, um, Judy wants it to be embedded into, into clay, so we want it to be reversed, reversed lettering. So I'm just going to click on move, grab the little top cross, rotate it to where it says 180 degrees, and now we can play. All right, so one thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a line that's exactly the length of, of my words, and I'm also going to need a line that is directly underneath this this face of the words, this intertext face right there. So if you don't have the words directly over the line, when you move it to the to the cylinder, it's not going to fit properly. So you don't want any any distance between the the text and and our line. So one trick I've learned to help with this is to draw a rectangle. This is going to allow me to line up my words and my lines. Then I'm going to push pull the rectangle. We're going to get rid of this here in just one minute. So I'm going to move the word so it sits on this plane which is directly over the red axis. And the best way to do that is to click somewhere on the edge of the component with the move tool and then click where it says on face. Now you know that the edge of, the, of your letters is directly over the red axis. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to push pull the side here so that it's right at the bottom of my letters. And one way to do that is to click and then just to snap to that endpoint. Snap to the farthest edge there. And now this bottom line here is exactly as long as our text is. And it's directly underneath the, the, the edge that we would like to put on the cylinder. So I'm going to grab the eraser tool and just start, just start erasing everything except for that bottom line. like so. So don't forget that the cylinder we would like to place the words on has a diameter of 300 millimeters or a radius of 150. We need to make an arc that is going to match that geometry. So that arc from side to side is going to be a, a 300 millimeters wide and the bulge is going to be 150 millimeters. It's perhaps easiest to do if we grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle in the XY plane, the red green axis plane. You can make it any size because we know exactly the size we want it to be. We're just going to type in 300 comma 150 and that's going to make the geometry that we can then use the arc tool to follow. So now if we grab the arc tool, click on this endpoint and this endpoint and then drag to here where it becomes a half circle, we can see that the bulge in the bottom left hand corner is 150 so we know we're right on target we can now click to form the arc if the arc is not smooth and has distinguishable sides of a polygon you should type 100 s now to make it a 100 sided arc if you might have already done that when you made your your cylinder now we grab the eraser tool 
and we simply erase the edges, everything here except for the arc. Now we are ready to use the Shape Bender tool. Again, you need to click on the object you'd like to, to bend. In this case, it's our text. Click on the Shape Bender tool. It tells you to select the line, which is the line here. It then tells you to select the curve, which is here. Now, this happens sometimes. I don't know if it happens on all computers, but in mine, I don't see what the shape looks like whenever it's bent until I hit Enter. Sometimes I see it, sometimes I don't. So it's unfortunate that I don't see it here. But let me just show you. If you hit Enter now, it's going to put the text in. And it's actually going to be wrong in two ways. A, it's reversed, so it's going to actually show up not reversed for the clay. And if we rotate here, we see that the outer edge of the words is what matches up with the cylinder. And in fact, what we want is we want this inner edge to line up with the cylinder. So I'm just going to press undo. I'm going to choose my words again, and this time choose the line, choose the shape. And this time I'm going to press the up arrow, which will change the way my start and end points work. Again, I'm sorry that you can't see this. This might happen on your machine as well. Press Enter. And now if we rotate around, we can see that the words now are reversed, like we want them for the clay, and that the inside face of the words now fits on the edge of, or will fit on the edge of our cylinder. So now all we have to do is move our cylinder into position. I'm going to first get rid of the arc, and then triple click on the cylinder, highlights all of it. The move function will move it toward, toward where I want to be. And you're probably not going to land it just right from the very beginning. As you can see, there's obviously a gap. If I highlight the words and choose the move tool and grab a, an endpoint, in the component. So again, move and grab a corner on face. We're getting close. You can tell that this side over here is embedded and this side over here is floating. If we take a look inside the cylinder, it will give us a better, better sense if we're sitting flush. So here, grab the section plane click on the top, which will just remove that momentarily, at least remove our view of it. And it's pretty close. What you're looking for is text that uh, is the intersection looks like that. It looks kind of um, striated. So it looks like that these guys here are still floating a little bit too much. So one more time, I grab the corner on face. Maybe one more little nudge along the red axis. Let's see. There you go. So now, striations just about everywhere. Once you're done holding your lips just right, you can kill the section plane, and you're done. Thanks for watching.